to a man, I actually don't feel like outsourcing. I feel like I've been the support act. Here comes the Rolling Stones. Uh, Mr. Carl Johan Sundberg. Yeah. Hold on. Thank you very much. Is this audible? Yes. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, host this uh, little um, discussion we will have with the rectors from the five member schools of the Stockholm School of Entrepreneurship. So I welcome the uh, rectors and the representatives for all these schools. Uh, uh, Eva Björkman, Lars Bergman, Harit Wallberg Henriksson, Kåre Bremer and Folke Snickars. I think Folke is here in the room. So please have uh, choose one of these green chairs you have green to choose from. So the intention of this of this panel is to listen to what the rectors, the representatives of universities think about entrepreneurship in the context we've discussed today. And the title is, as you all know, the universities in 2019, breeding ground for successful entrepreneurs, question mark. So I've given each and every one here one and a half minute to open up, <laughs> and then we'll discuss further. So I'll begin with Eva Björkman, Konstfakt, please. Thank you. Uh, one and a half minute. My view on entrepreneurship within our university, I see it as it's our responsibility is to support students how to become entrepreneurial and creative. As an art and design university, this is crucial because our students' possibilities to make careers is depending on that ability. I like to use the term intellectual entrepreneurship, a term that some of you probably heard about. It's formulated in, among American universities to articulate new ways how to stimulate entrepreneurship. Here are some principles. First, entrepreneurs are culture innovators. Entrepreneurs are tuned in to deeper culture currents from which new meanings emerge. They are able to create new space within which those meanings and imperatives can be articulated and engaged. Second, entrepreneurs have the courage to act first before they know the answers or even all the questions. They are comfortable with ambiguity. And that is one thing that is part of our university is very much so. Third, Despite the cultural myth of the entrepreneur as a lone uranium, entrepreneurs are profoundly connected and collaborative. They have always double mission, engaging opportunities to emerge, that, that emerge and, 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 and sustaining living web of relationships, and that makes innovation uh, and valuable change possible. Finally, entrepreneurs understand what the, we all are creative, all capable of engaging our own situation for the better, and all capable for continuing uh, building this capacity. Beautiful words. We'll see what results you can uh, yes. pr present <laughs> later on in the discussion. Hyatt Valver Henriksson, Karolinska Institute, please. Thank you. Um, well, um, I think it's uh, very interesting that we are all here discussing this today, because if we look back at the universities 10, 15 years ago, we didn't even discuss the word entrepreneurship uh, well, maybe if you go back 15 years or more. But today we are actually having this concept as an integrated part of what we are doing, and I think that's um, something we should be very proud of. Uh, of course we need to develop it further. At Karolinska Institute, which is, as you probably know, the medical university we have in Sweden and the only medical university we have, uh, we started already, already in the middle of the 90s, in 1995, uh, to uh, build up an innovation system uh, via a holding company and uh, the former rector, Hans Wixell, who is here, started this. And this has been very, very good for, for creating this atmosphere of, of uh, thinking about how can we commercialize what we are doing in science at an academic level. Because I think that is the problem we have had in, 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 in Sweden, that in the academia we haven't really been thinking about this. And you and I, we met two days ago. Mm. It's unbelievable. We ran into each other at the airport in San Francisco uh, one early morning. I was flying back and you were flying somewhere else. 
uh, there in California, at the universities in California, when you visit them, this has been in, in, in the air for, for, for 20, 30 years. They have been thinking uh, and growing up with this thought that we have to commercialize things. So I think that's the difference, and that's what we need to do, and we need to get it into the student's mind that this is important. Thank you very much. Uh, so now to Kåre Bremer, the representing rector of the, of the newest member of the Stockholm School of Entrepreneurship, please. Stockholm University is a fairly recent member of, uh, Stockholm, of uh, the Stockholm School of Entrepreneurship. And I'm very pleased that uh, my university has become a member of this school. Uh, our university consists of four faculties, sciences, social sciences, humanities and law. And as such complement our sister universities, Karolinska Institute and, and KTH. We have a lot of uh, activities uh, related to, to this area within our Faculty of Sciences, but I would like, to, would like to highlight today our other three faculties, Humanities, Social Sciences and Law. Knowledge-based com commercialization industry is something for the future, and uh, we have a lot actually at Stockholm University to, to develop in this area. We intend now to include uh, courses in entrepreneurship in, uh, our in our at the master's level uh, in several programs of education. We also intend to uh, include uh, a course in entrepreneurship at the uh, PhD level within the university. We have created a particular advisory board uh, for our connection with the SSES uh, consisting of the four deans of our four faculties. We've also created a particular center at our Department of Business Administration for our relations with, with the Stockholm School of Entrepreneurship. I'm very pleased that we are a member now today. So are we. Um, then I hand over to Handelshögskolan, Rektor Lars Bergman, please. Yes, yes. Um, well, in the past and for a long time, I think universities and also the Stockholm School of Economics primarily have educated people for careers in major organizations, major companies in the public sector. The real challenge for the next 10 years or, or, or for the future is to offer entrepreneurial people something interesting at our schools. And for the Stockholm School of Economics, this is particularly important, I think, because we have educated a lot of business leaders and specialists for the business community. So uh, we are talking about entrepreneurship as our second leg. And uh, that is to attract people who has the talent, as Stefan Persson said, uh, it has to be a certain talent, certain interest, and, and to give them a good education. We have three pillars for this future work, and that is ongoing. One is research, I think, understanding the conditions and motivation and everything relevant to entrepreneurship continues to be important. Second is education, but not only purely academic education. I think that uh, what the Stockholm School of Entrepreneurship has offered and continues to offer is very important, more skilled type courses that are extremely relevant for entrepreneurial people. Thirdly, I think we have to offer practice, such as a business lab that we have and other forms of, um, of possibilities for young people to test their ideas, to, to, to develop their ideas while still at the university or, or a school. So these are the real challenges and I think the practical parts are the most challenging because we are very academic in our traditions and uh, there is a lot to be done on that point. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, Folke Snicker representing the Royal Institute of Technology, please. In, <coughs> in 2005, there was an initi initiative taken in Helsinki by the correspondence of Ivar Björkman, the rector of, called Uryo Sotamo. <laughs> and he proposed that there be formed a new university in Finland. It was not a university of technology, but a university of innovation. And it was created by the merger of Ivar's school, uh, Lars's school, and my own school. And uh, four, four years later, this, uh, this innovation project actually took off. And on the 1st of January 2010, uh, the Alto University starts its operation. Uh, when they selected the first director of the Alto University, uh, they headhunted 
our pro-rector, Tula Teri, as the first rector of this European innovation or the Nordic innovation, the first innovation university. And uh, one of the reasons for that was that uh, uh, we had worked at KTH since the early, early in 2000, the 2000, from 2003 approximately, in having a strategy for KTH as, a, as an entrepreneurial university, building on the ideas of Burton Clark. And I was working actively with Tula Thierry on that for five years. And in her year as a pro-rector of KTH, she started to implement that together with our new rector, Peter Gudmundsson. And engineers, as we now are, we are now re-engineering the Royal Institute with our plan until 2010 to boost the entrepreneurial capacity of our engineering graduates by a factor of five. That's our mission. Thank you very much. So these were bold statements to some degree and uh, partly describing of, of what you do. So if you, if you look ahead to 2019, uh, where will you be and what will you put in? What kind of resources will you match the contribution from Stefan Persson with? Because uh, it's not likely or not certain anyway that uh, the CS will be funded the way it is in five or ten years. Any thoughts around how to reach these very worthwhile goals? Harriet? Uh, well, I think it's very important that we continue to support this. Uh, it has been very successful during the first 10 years. Uh, and um, f from my perspective, uh, looking at the medical students, the, the people in, in the healthcare sector, I think we need to, uh, um, to get them more interested in the area, get them to think about it, because basically, I mean, we have two things to think about. One thing is to really improve the healthcare, healthcare sector, the hospitals, the how, how we perform things in, 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 the, in the hospitals. And the other thing is actually to develop new treatments for disease. So, so there is a lot we can think of if, if we really uh, get this into the minds of our students, our teachers, and so forth. I think uh, Corey was uh, slightly before you. So resources to match. Well, I can't promise anything about 2019. What about 2012? <laughs> <laughs> but for the next five years, mm -hmm. uh, we have actually increased our resources to our contacts with the, the outside society and created a particular department for commer commercialization and innovation. And we are focusing on uh, our faculties of humanities and social sciences. Uh, to train them or to... To, to train them mm -hmm. and uh, identified a number of scientists and uh, other persons, students, PhD students, teachers at these faculties who are actually interested to learn more about this. Uh, so you, so you see a, re a desire see a great out there. We uh, mm -hmm. see a great potential there, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. indeed. Yes, yeah. for us it's... Uh, I mean, as the CES has been, during the time that has been now, it's kind of getting, implementing SSES into our regular programs. That's, that's, that's a work that we're working with, and that's just going to continue even more. So it becomes part, a natural part of our regular programs on both the, the bachelor and the MA level. At, and also, of course, for us, it's, it's also a part of extending and going into research in, in these areas that we see a strong effort and we are putting a lot of energy into the research side on this and also that we have uh, built up during these years with help from SSES uh, our incubator and that's going to get other finances resources and it's it's so it has been catalytical for what yeah you do. yeah okay mm -hmm. Um, as uh, the Stockholm School of Economics is a small school, I have a possibility to meet individually each new student every year. It takes two full days and I'm spending a lot of time <laughs> talking to students. It is very interesting, I must say. And uh, having done that now five times, I, I, I see some trends. When I did it the first time and talking about what the plans and, and the motivations were, actually very few of the new students thought about being an entrepreneur, working with small companies and so on. Uh, they all thought about careers of the more, more, more traditional type. Now this year, uh, I don't know exactly the, the percentage, but a large number of them actually want to or think in terms of being entrepreneurs. The majority or, no, or not the 10 majority, rather than 5% or? Say 15, 20%, okay. perhaps, perhaps 25, mm -hmm. I don't know really. But 
it's a clear trend. And I think that that's a real challenge for us to make sure that these students um, think that they get something out of the education and also that they can continue to, to develop their ideas. And uh, that for us, that we can continue to bring in young people who have these ideas, mm -hmm. I think is very important. Uh, also that we get them to complete their studies, which is not always so easy. <laughs> Sounds pretty smart. Folke? We have started our, our strategy towards the career end of our, edu of our education system by for the first time assessing carefully what are the careers of our students. And so we now know that uh, more than one third of the students we educate go into small and medium sized enterprises. 40% uh, of the already after two years have, uh, have project management positions and one out of five has already after two to three years uh, uh, leadership positions. So. Uh, the type of market for which we educate is completely different from some of the expectations that the students have, as Lars was mm. saying, when they enter the university. Mm. And it is but then again, you have industrial economics since many years back. I, is, is that part included in your statistics here? Because yeah. index is uh, yes, they're course. almost geared yes, towards. Of course. But uh, <laughs> it's not so that only the students from industrial okay. economics go into this. Mm. Industrial economics and the Stockholm School of Entrepreneurship has been extremely important uh, for, uh, for our strategy and I think for the strategy of all universities. Mm -hmm. This is a, a good example of, of cooperation that mm -hmm. has been very successful in our, in our university system and also sponsored you know, one mm -hmm. of the industrialists in the region. We should see more of that. May I ask, uh, now we discussed to some degree mostly the educational component of this, namely the student uh, training and education. What about putting science to use, research, knowledge into products and services from the universities? What role can SSES play and what do you see a university doing in the future to spin out ideas from the researchers? How, how, w how would SSES come into that picture? Or are they separate entities, the tech transfer office, and they do what they do with the mm -hmm. scientists, and you have their students and their education. Is that mm -hmm. compartmentalized, Lars? Well, I have a strong view on this, which may not be very popular, but I think that SSCs should not get into research. I think no, I'm, I'm not saying supporting research, but I'm asking you... Yeah. But I think SSCs has found an excellent niche mm -hmm. in terms of, of giving practice and inspiration to mm -hmm. young people. I, I, th I think... Uh, that focus should be developed mm. and, and uh, worked on. I think research will take place anyway. Oh, uh, that was not really what I meant, but Eva had made a better comment. Yeah, uh, no, I thought about, I mean, SEC has, has the focus on entrepreneurship. I think it's, it's part of that we are these membership schools and mm -hmm. we have this, what I said, the potential. And I think it's, it's there, it's in the courses. It's, it's about these interdisciplinary collaborations. And these, I mean, these are things that it's so necessary for, for the future, for for universities to develop that. How would you go about making it further integrated? Because it is to some degree integrated. We do have joint students or students from different schools in different pro programs, but how do you see to that it really becomes integrated in the sense that you put in the different competencies on projects to bring forward? I can see in the future that perhaps there are teachers from different from the schools mm -hmm. in, in, in the courses. Because that's not the case now to a large degree, I would say. No, but in the future. It's more the students that are yeah. fusing it. I think uh, Harit and Folke. Well, I think the, the, the uh, best thing so far is actually uh, this integration uh, of the students, that they meet, they, they get ideas, they, they see other things than, than what is given from their own university. I think that is very important, uh, the interdisciplinary uh, aspect of it. Uh, and I, th I think we should try to bring that to faculty as well, to mm. the teachers, to, to have common courses, to, to uh, make it interdisciplinary uh, there as well. But I fully agree with Lars. I, I think the tech transfer, the, the mm. our own innovation system, we, we have that up and running and that's mm. working very, very well. And, and we have so different uh, ways of, of, of doing that, so I, I think... But you mentioned something interesting, namely the need for, uh, let's say, transfer of uh, domains between the universities. Uh, at, that at, is at important. At exactly. At Kotehoff, yeah. for yeah. example, there's a great need for maybe medical knowledge, and at Karolinska yes. about technical and business Absolutely. knowledge and so, and this transfer between faculty is not extensive, to say the least. I think Folke and then uh, I have a strong view on the role of SSES, and this strong view happens to be exactly identical to Lars's view. 
You know, there is so, so much to do for the Stockholm School of Entrepreneurship in creating the educational environments typical for the entrepreneur in the modern society. So again, coming back from Helsinki, taking a look at their design factory, uh, where actually the entrepreneurship was not taught in that sense. It was demonstrated in the form of large projects mm -hmm. where there was a, br a bringing in, you know, uh, of students from all of these different universities. As they were saying, if the student didn't come, they went out to get them because they wanted to create this atmosphere of cooperation cons concerning entrepreneurship. In real projects. In real projects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Taking two thirds of a, of a year, mm -hmm. they would work. So I, I think you could do much more of that mm -hmm. under the auspices of the Stockholm so that's School that's of That's a good idea, which we bring into our thoughts, definitely. Kora? SSES is a school. Uh, mm -hmm. It deals with education. There is mm -hmm. a lot to do uh, in, in this area uh, to start courses and to develop this area. Uh, I think we should continue with that. Mm -hmm. uh, with respect to the transformation of new discoveries and new ideas into commercially valuable uh, products and services, we have another system for that mm -hmm. that we need to develop also. We should do this in parallel, but I don't think perhaps there is they a They should not to touch do. each other? Well, they should touch each other, mm. I, I, th I say. <laughs> but I'm not saying that, I, I don't think that SSCS perhaps should go into this No, 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 area absolutely now. not. No. That's not the case. Okay. So I think we maybe should open the floor for a question or two. So any, uh, anybody that wishes to ask or comment? You have the chance now. Five very powerful people. Yes? You will, you, I think you'll get a mic right there. The name, name, name and affiliation, please. Yeah. My name is Mats Hus. I represent Hus Event. And I currently do a study about entrepreneurship in the Nordic countries on behalf of the Nordic Council. Uh, my, answer, my question is for the Alto University. What uh, was the power unifying uh, this new collaboration? You mean what drove it to come into Yeah, what drove to it to what existence? made because I'm looking for best cases for my report, so this might be a good okay. case. Okay, how come this happened? It's but a great thing, but... It's not for me to say. You should interview two Latiria. But you have but no clue. I, I know, of course. So the, the, the real innovation in the, in the, in the Alt University was the following. There is already and will continue to be a very strong connection with technology and natural sciences. Uh, but, so the Alt University didn't need to do that. What there was a need for was to, was to modernize the way that we work in technical universities. Most of the technical universities we have were, are, are, uh, are represent the Industrial Revolution. They have not really been changed. And therefore, the idea was to, was to put, put it to closer to the market, if you see what I mean. And then keeping the links to, to the natural science-based technology. Mm -hmm. This, is, this okay. is the market idea. And they have got an increase of 100 million per year until 2015. Visit them and see what they do. They, they're worthy of Thank that. Thank you. Uh, further question or comment? If not, any final comment from... Uh, Can I have... Uh, yes, please. May I add something to this Alto? Yes, no, please. Uh, if we imagine that we, instead of starting uh, the SSCS 10 years ago, had merged these five universities mm -hmm. with the aim of... of with only uh, one person on stage. <laughs> yes, oh yeah. yes, and um, with the aim of, of, of creating an environment where students could come together and learn mm -hmm. and develop entrepreneurship, I don't think the result had been very good. Mm. Uh, lots of bureaucracy and, and all mm. sorts of problems. I, I think our way of doing it is, is much better than the Finnish. To work whenever possible together. To focus on the students yes. and, and bring them together and mm -hmm. have a focused development of entrepreneurship. Harit and then and then we'll have to break, I believe. Please. Well, I think one thing uh, we need to emphasize is that uh, it is very important to show uh, the general public that we actually are taking basic science, develop it to something which is beneficial for society. Because what we really, what, what we all are dependent on is the trust of the general public, that they can see that what we are doing actually is to some benefit. Mm. Um, and, and of course here, SSES is mm. 
uh, a part in that. So if we don't put knowledge to use, they have all reason to distrust us, possibly. Yes. Yes. Ivar, last comment. Last comment. I think it's also talking about Alta University. There are others, also other examples. You have the D school in Stanford, mm -hmm. but with design is very much involved, and then you have also initiatives in London that brings this topic into. Mm -hmm. But it's done in different way. Mm -hmm. So just to summarize, basically, the SNCS itself is regarded from many perspectives in the world as a quite unique phenomenon as such. So mm -hmm. some people may in other places say exactly the same thing. We should look at SNCS because they do this and that. This we hear quite a lot, I would say. Mm -hmm. But uh, the light might also come from the east or the west. Mm -hmm. But here we are today, mm -hmm. and I thank the panel so much for your contributions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also have gifts for you. I thought about coming up with my own university, but instead I wrote my own book. And if you can all please make it compulsory course literature for the first year students, before anybody has dropped out, um, that would be much appreciated. Thank you so much. Here you go. And on for you. Hold on, we will also get the alarm clocks. So you can. Um, you can um, Yes, hold on. Help me with the Christmas presents here. Um, here we go. Just take one, please. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. And yes, and a round of hands. Thank you. Wow. Yes.